Hello, good evening everyone. I hope uh, you can hear my voice. Hi Paul, can you hear my voice? Okay, I'm waiting for anyone can hear my voice because, uh, you know, uh, YouTube latency as usual. <laughs> and since I'm doing my uh, broadcast uh, uh, alone here, so I need to verify whether my voice is a... Uh, your voice is a bit soft. Okay, maybe I need to... Little bit scream. <laughs> How's that? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess uh, it's okay now. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Louder. I will a little bit uh uh yeah uh like screaming. <laughs> Okay, good evening everyone. Uh welcome again to the .net meetup as usual. Uh yeah, I I believe that uh uh we've been a long time uh not see uh, each other in person, but uh well, you know, the situation still like this, but hopefully within this year or next year we will start uh doing in person meetup again. Uh this is an exciting day for me for me for because i can share something that i learned uh when i was working in uh national university of singapore something that i never uh i know it but i never understand it uh well last time uh i'm still learning as well right now so uh yeah so this is a call it a discrete event simulation so uh there's a, a expert um a master in uh, uh NUS his name is Dr. Li Haobin he's the one who created this O2 desk uh this kind of thing so uh but because this is a, a dot .net developers community i would like to share some kind of like uh the way a developer explain simulation uh so it's not like i don't want to I don't want to go to the theoretical kind of thing, you know. I just want to give some kind of like a how to use a simulation or discrete event simulation using O2Desk. But then I just now I do some kind of like rehearsal. I was thinking like, okay, because O2Desk is a quite a, a large uh, framework. I mean, it is impossible to be uh, to be uh, put in one meetup. Uh, so probably this time is probably the 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 understanding first about the discrete event simulation using Autodesk. Later, the next meetup and the third meetup will be probably more to practical uh, usage of the uh, discrete event simulation. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's go to the uh, this beautiful animation and I'm just going to highlight laser pointer and then I'm just going to go next. If I can go next. Okay, there you go. So, um, uh, what is simulation? Uh, something that I I learned uh, when we was a child, probably. We, if you are a software developer, I mean, if you are a programmer, when you're a kid, uh, you, you heard about this. So, simulation. And you always tied this simulation with a simulator, right? Like flight simulator, everything like that. Uh, apparently, there is a little bit different between simulation and the simulator itself, you know. So, uh, simulation, according to the the, the research, uh, I mean, uh, the expert in simulation is uh, a technique of uh, imitating the behavior of some uh, situation. Uh, there is a source. Uh, there is a, a a source system. So 
if you have a system and you want to imitate the behavior uh, of that system um, or by, uh, you know, uh, if you like, we want to create like an analogy of, of the system, okay? Or as an apparatus, meaning that is, a, is something that you can build upon, can be something that is physical or maybe digital, for example. Uh, that is, we call it simulator. That's the difference, apparently. So the simulation itself is not a simulator, but simulator, it is using simulation, something like that. That is something that uh, uh, I understand. Because simulation is uh, number one is to gain information uh, more conveniently, meaning that uh, we want to calculate something, for example, like this. You want to know whether this system is uh, efficient or optimized or not. Okay, usually we, we do some kind of like trial and error. It's actually we're doing simulation manually, <laughs> slowly, you know, we change the parameter. That is something that we do actually. Uh, doing simulation, but using our own way of uh, simulating. And then uh, the second can be uh, for train. So you can train an actor uh, as a personal, for example, in a virtual environment simulation, uh, like flight simulator, for example, uh, you give a, a, a pilot learning to fly, for example, in, in a real simulation machine, you know, like for pilot. And then there is one person try to give some kind of like a, a, a turbulence, you know, a raining, a heavy cloud, something like that. So you as a pilot, uh, when you do the, uh, using the simulator, you you need to to solve this issue so the airplane can be safely uh, take off, fly and landing, for example. So this is a, a, a simulation in terms of uh, simulation, you know. Okay, uh, but then, uh, there is a ways of doing simulation. It's not only like, for example, using a software or a manual. Uh, number one is uh, the easiest way is physical simulation. So this is a simulation in which the physical objects are uh, substitute for the real thing. Uh, you know the the uh, in uh, man car manufacturer when they do the testing, uh, they use a, a a dummy, for example, a dummy. Uh, 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 you know, uh, what do you call it? A crash test dummy, ah, crash test dummy. So they use this and then they will have a sensor that, that, uh, that record everything, uh, inside the, the dummy and then give the data to the simulation uh, machine and then they will do crunch the, uh, data. Okay. Uh, next one can be like continuous simulation. Uh, this is simulation that's something that you don't want to do, but sometimes you require. Why you don't want to do? Because this is real-time simulation, meaning that uh, if you want to do simulation, you want to go from here to the moon, you want to simulate this, you really, really have to count second by second, go to the moon, and then return. So if, if the real-time is going from here to the moon is re uh, and return, it takes, like for example, like, uh, I don't know, one week, two weeks, for example, then the simulation will go two or three weeks, something that you don't want to do. Uh, but sometimes it's required. Uh, if the simulation requires that you need to do some kind of like a real time, because you cannot do, uh, you cannot an an make analogy of, of the time, then you need to do a real uh, continuous simulation. And then they have uh, this one, the discrete event simulation. So this one something that I just, uh, actually I know discrete mathematics, I thought it's a little bit the same, but apparently a little bit not the same. <laughs> so the discrete event is a uh, is more uh, you try to to chunk an event because what is happening within the event is something that you don't have to calculate except the time. For example, like this, when I say when there is an event, I'm eating. For example, so when I'm when I'm eating, uh, we don't have to see what I'm doing, right? All we have to do is how long Riza is eating. Is it 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or one hour? That's the time that require for Riza eating. So this is the discrete event simulation. So when the, the event change, the state change. So because event is a uh, number one is immutable. Once the event is happened, it cannot be changed. The one that can be changed is only the state. 
So for example, when you uh, uh, enter, enter a room, the event is happening, and then uh, the state change, your location is changed from one location to another location, from outside to inside the room. So that is the discrete event simulation. A little bit confusing at the beginning because uh, when we do, for example, in programming like asynchronous or, or, or synchronous programming or doing like timer, it's a real time. When it happens, for example, you calculate like three seconds, it's really, really three seconds. But in discrete event simulation, uh, it's one time. One time, not even have a second, not even have a, a minute, not an hour. It's just one event time. And how long the event? The event, it, 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 it's uh, three seconds. The event is occur in three seconds. That is the meaning of the discrete event simulation. Later, we'll, we'll uh, a little bit go deep and you will understand uh, what I'm talking about. And then there's a hybrid simulation, which is mixed between the continuous and discrete event simulation. So sometimes the, the, the researcher or, or some or some manufacturing, they use these two hybrid, uh, sometimes require discrete event to calculate something that they need to look at uh, for analytical purpose. And the other one is the correspondence is, uh, uh, is the continuous time. So they want to see uh, in, real, in real time, in real world time, like, like you see. So in the difference between the continuous simulation and discrete event simulation is the time. Conti continuous simulation is a time based, is a is a, a real time, is a clock time, is is your world time right now. If you look at your clock, that is the sim continuous simulation. Discrete event simulation, uh, the uh, it's a uh, an event, a simulation time, is simulation clock. So how many events that is happen, and then you you add this time when it's happening. So uh, if for example, uh, uh. Again, the uh, same example. Like for example, I I went I went for eating. Then they will only calculate one time. The event is one time eating. How long? So the that that time is become like a delay. You're eating. That means a delay. Okay. I I'll give you an example later, which is a uh, very interesting for a uh, software developer. And uh, there's a uh, other uh, simulation like a stochastic uh, and deterministic simulation. Stochastic is meaning that uh, you use a random uh, to generate the, the simulation. However, because it's stochastic, you should be able to repeat playback the same uh, scenario uh, of that random. So for example, you use a seed, random seed, you, you set the seed is uh, 10, for example. So the next time you can do simulation again with seed 10 and it will uh, uh, run the simulation the same thing and etc. So a lot of simulation uh, ways uh, uh, for this, but we are going to talk about discrete event simulation. Okay, uh, number one that we need to remind, I, re I need to remind uh, all of us, uh, because at the beginning I was, I was uh, have a little bit mistake, is this one. Simulation is not the same as testing, not even equal as testing. So testing is something that you want to uh, test, you want to uh, verify, uh, but simulation is not. So simulation is not to verify whether it's correct or not correct, because simulation is only running whatever the model system that you, we created. We're the one who create this and then we calculate and then we run it and we see the analytical uh, output, the data uh, from that simulation. So it's different like testing. Testing is something that you want to verify, you want to validate whether the system is working or not. Simulation is not. Although sometimes you can. Uh, so a little bit, little bit like, like, uh, yeah, very thin difference here. But just to remember that simulation is not equal, uh, and testing. And now we go to our, yeah, our life. Computer simulation. <laughs> so what is computer simulation? Uh, it's actually quite easy. It's com computer simulation is uh, usually we call it sim in, in, in the simulation uh, world. Uh, it's an attempt uh, to model a real life uh, or a hypothetical situation of a system on a software, on a computer program. So uh, it can be, uh, can be uh, measured, it can be studied, and to see how the system works or not, okay? Whether the system is uh, actually efficient, 
is it optimized or not optimized or we create a system that is probably uh, is uh, wasting energy for example uh, that is something that we we use a, a computer simulation to to calculate whether this system the one that we created is uh, actually uh, the utilization the efficiency the optimization can be measured okay for example by by changing the parameters, the configuration, or the variables of the uh, of the model, we be able to predict uh, what will be the the outcome. Okay, so that is the 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 usage of uh, computer simulation. Uh, last time in the world, I think they don't have this because uh, that time computer is very you know it's very slow. Number one, number two is not like. Uh, the knowledge probably also uh, regarding simulation still not like now uh, but now it's a little bit very not a little bit it's super advanced compared to the the old way and it is a tool for uh, to virtually investigate the behavior of the system under uh, the study under when we want to study that system okay uh, but just now probably you you hear what i'm saying uh, multiple times which is a, a model a model we, uh, which is this one, this model. So um, once we know what is simulation, we need to understand how to model a system. Ah, so apparently, once I learn about simulation, the first thing that I need to learn before I learn simulation is how to create a model of a certain system, which is apparently not as easy as, as you know, as I think last time. <laughs> so when we see something like a missionary, uh, a machinery, or you see something like uh, some system like uh, people queuing in McDonald's, for example, to buy burgers, uh, that is a system. When someone queue and then go to the cashier, waiting, and then uh, get the, 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 uh, the order, and then they need to wait to get the, the, the food, and so forth. So uh, that is something you you can model in the real world, okay? So that that is why in simulation it has a, a so called a, a big knowledge, a big study uh, regarding uh, simulation uh, modeling. So uh, simulation modeling is a uh, is the process of creating and analyzing a digital prototype. Remember, digital prototype of a physical model. So when you see a car, you want to make this as a digital model. Okay, so you want to create this. Uh, you have a car, but not a real car, but it's in a virtual car, which mimics, uh, imitate exactly uh, like, like uh, in the real world. For example, if someone uh, hit the horn, okay, bim, bim, then... In the simulation, uh, in the in the digital prototype, uh, if we execute horn, it should be the same thing. Okay, so you need to have something like that. Uh, but this one, this one is con uh, also considering how deep you want to model. For example, uh, let's say you have a, a crane. You have a crane. It has a hoist. It has everything. You can go all the way deep until the 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 for example the actuator or the motor of the the or the probably the hydraulic of the crane you can but sometimes you we need to ask uh, to need to ask uh, ourselves whether that is the one that you want to observe you want to you want to analyze whether whether this system working up to that uh deep so this this kind of deep level of uh making the model is in simulation called fidelity so this the, the 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 higher the fidelity, the more accurate, of course. But it's going to be like uh, super slow when you run the simulation because let's say you run something and then it will go all the way deep to the to the machinery, for example, and then they need to simulate even to the small smallest one inside atomic in the in the component of the of the machine, for example, and then all the way go back to the to the uh, the main system, which is the crane, for example. So that is a uh, 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 the 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 digital model, and then uh, we create a prototype of from the physical model in in the digital world. That's why uh, we call it simulation modeling. 
Uh, and uh, simulation modeling is used to help designers uh, and engineers understand whether uh, on a certain condition or in uh, which condition uh, a certain part maybe fail. For example, uh, for example, you want to know whether if I give this parameter like voltage, for example, uh, you give the voltage higher, what happened? Will the fuse uh, blow up or not, for example? Uh, you can simulate this before it happens outside in the real world. So if you have this model uh, quite uh, uh, significant, meaning that the higher fidelity all the way up to the fuse, so automatically when you uh, give a, a parameter high voltage, it will simulate uh, a breakdown of the fuse, for example. That is simulation. That is the powerful of simulation modeling. So the 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 more you model, uh, you, you you do the accurate modeling, the more uh, accurate the result is. The problem in modeling is sometimes we are wasting our time doing the modeling because the, we don't understand the system. We don't understand the domain of that 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 system. So that is why sometimes when you want to uh, simulate some model, it require for you to learn that domain system first, number one, before you create any modeling uh, in the software. Um, if you are only a software programmer, you just, uh, oh, I just do coding, I don't care about domain, uh, it's not going to work because uh, you, you're never going to go to the moon because if you want to create software to go to the moon, you need to understand at least like, for example, rocket, uh, you need to understand about uh, astronomy a little bit, not full, but you need to understand the domain at least. And you'll be able to generate or create the simulation modeling accurately. And then the simulation modeling can also help uh, to predict such as like a fluid flow, like heat transfer. Uh, let's say uh, I have a beam and then I put a heat uh, I, I I use a light lighter and then I, I put heat and then it can simulate where uh, for how long and uh, how much is the the uh, the heat will come to your left hand uh, here. Yeah, right, okay. You see right hand, right, but it's a left hand. So uh, and you can uh, do some kind of like if you want to create some kind of like uh, 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 heat heat sink, for example, you need you need to uh, to dissipate how to dissipate the the heat before it reaches the, the that that thing. That is the uh, the use of simulation modeling. Uh, I can see like almost anything uh, you can model uh, in in simulation. That that is why I'm a little bit uh, focused. Uh, I mean, I try to understand this more deeply because I'm excited uh, learning this. Uh, you just imagine you can model everything in your. Uh, Anything that you see, you, for example, like um, uh, you go to the manufacturing or you go to terminal port, you go to the logistic, you go to the, even to economy or a virus spreading or something, you can simulate this uh, using simulation uh, uh, as long as the model is correct. Okay, so uh, let's go to the example, a simple example. Here we have a customer, okay, and there is a customer queuing. Okay, uh, I also have no idea why everybody is holding the chin, uh, touching the chin. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, insert this from uh, PowerPoint. So, yeah. And for example, there's a cafe here, which is uh, receive an order, which is only one counter. You go to a cafe and there is one counter. And there is a, a one person in front, uh, in front of the, the counter, which is they need to pay first. Uh, they order, they need to pay, and then they will wait for the... The coffee, for example, or or probably uh, you order first and then you wait uh, on the other side. And there's a customer queuing to buy a, a coffee as well in here. Okay, and there is a customer customer haven't joined to queue. They're still probably walking. If you go to the mall, they she's still walking. You know, is <laughs> she don't even uh, standing in here. Uh, so this one we can. Uh, model this using a continuous simulation first, okay, meaning using real time. Just imagine you are in front of this. Let's say you, you, you are in a cafe, you're in front, you look behind you, wait, there's one, two, three percent, and you hit a stopwatch. You want to know how long this order finish, how long this, this uh, uh, barista uh, create the coffee, 
and then uh, uh okay uh register the order and then uh, make the copy and give it to you for example and this person also can use the stopwatch lah, for for them to wait like this one this one this one i have to wait and this one still walking uh we don't have to count now because she's still walking okay so uh between this queue and the customer uh there is a time which is a uh, uh we call it the inter arrival time meaning that uh the time between the 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 the, the last person uh queuing and the new person will join the queue for example so usually in simulation we call it inter arrival time so this inter arrival time can be in software can be used a generator and then you use a distribution for example like a, a poison triangular a normal distribution so uh, using this you'll be able to get the distribution uh, how long the inter uh, inter arrival time but we are since we are using continuous simulation so we want to really really observe like you you sit in the coffee uh, in a cafe and then you use a stopwatch and then you write down uh, the time uh, for each of them and as you can see because they are queuing there is a queuing time right of course you hate queuing anyone hate queuing the same like me also but it happens in the real world it happens so these three person uh, have to queue so if i ask you uh, how long this person will queue uh, it depends right it can be this customer faster this one is slower this one is super slow uh, and this one may be very fast quite fast for example so it depends we don't know the time but the total time of queuing this one and this one and this one all relative to the the the, the last uh, uh service okay so and then also they have the service time the service time is the time when they uh when they start order uh register the order pay and then uh, pre the barista prepare the coffee and they give it to you so this one we call it the service time so from the the arriving time the queuing time and the service time this we can cal uh, calculate using continuous simulation probably you're asking me why we have to do this right <laughs> yeah because we want to know for example what is the average time of this person if queuing uh, uh ordering for example and what is the average time of this person queuing we sometimes uh if you have a, a store a shop uh and you see very long queue uh, you might want to know <laughs> because otherwise your customer will run away trust me the longer the queue and it's it takes forever for example uh nobody's going to buy your food right so most of the time the the, the coffee shop or a restaurant uh, a fast food restaurant they tend to simulate this using simulation so they try to simulate how to make the queuing more faster okay and how to make uh, the service time shorter okay so that is why they use simulation so that the practical sometimes uh, the easiest practical way is just you want to shorten the time lah, okay so if you have a business you want to shorten the time uh Either is by uh is by service or is by assist machinery uh, like that um, and the output can be like for example you add a robot or you add some kind of like uh, automatic automation or probably you 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 can do something else uh, later I, I will show you uh, what is the solution for this for example so uh, as you can see this is second by second minute by minute. It's in real time. So the, the process from starting from the customer coming in, entering, and then queuing, and total until she received the, the, uh, the co uh, coffee, uh, ordering and get, get the coffee, how long does it take? Okay. So if you use a continuous simulation, you need to wait exactly real world time. <laughs> so if the process this takes 10 minutes, that's 10 minute simulation. That's why we don't want to do that, right? <laughs> we we don't want to do simulation. We want to know uh, what is the average uh, time uh, of this customer waiting, for example. You don't want to wait with 10. Why we have to wait 10 minutes, for example, like that, right? But sometimes uh, it's required. Okay. So uh, this, we call it a customer in a system. So this is also in a system. It's a queuing system. And this is in the service uh, system 
server system. So we want to know, uh, for example, what is the average time, yeah? uh, or what is the utilization uh, rate of this uh, uh, counter, for example, uh, whether it's uh, very slow or super slow or cannot handle it at all. For example, like uh, it's always hundred percent utilization. Meaning what? Uh, your your barista will quit. Trust me, <laughs> if it is like every day, uh, the utilization is 100%, he or she have to prepare coffee 100% every time, uh, he, she or he will quit, okay? So sometimes a, a, a cafe owner or restaurant owner or a fast food owner, uh, they will use this system to calculate, okay, we need to have some kind of like a service rate. Uh, what is the rate? of the service for each person human can handle for example or uh by experience by 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 the 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 experience of the, the restaurant is doing uh now let's see in discrete event simulation so in discrete event simulation the same situation here but as you can see this become the inter rival time rate so uh in discrete event simulation we don't care about how long they're going to wait. No, we just want to know what is the time rate that uh, the, the 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 time will will come. So when when this customer come, you hit the timestamp, okay? Boop, timestamp. When the customer jump to the queue, you hit the time timestamp again, and then you know the inter arrival time of this. And uh, in the queuing system, it's zero. We can. We can assume it's zero. Why? Because this one is just sorting. So this one first, this one first, this one first. We don't have to calculate. So we can say that the inter arrival and uh, this one, well, we don't have to calculate the queue. But if you want to make it a real, real system, can just at at the time. But because uh, each of them, for example, like this person, can say that okay, I'm just going to go to toilet first, and then later I will queue back. So this this person can uh, exit the queue. Meaning this person now become faster, right? So that is uh, uh, the queuing system. But the idea is we don't have to know how long they are queuing, but we need to tell them this is the time that usually they queuing. So uh, because uh, the starting from uh, from the starting the customer arrive and starting uh, the order that is the most important thing that we need to calculate. The queuing is zero. We can calculate. We can say it's just zero lah. Uh, and then uh, in the service, we have the service time rate. So uh, we can give by by uh, experience, for example, the, the, the owner or the, the manager can tell that um, the service uh, rate time is uh, 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 two uh, customer per 10 minutes, for example, or uh, usually per hour, maybe uh, per hour, like 20 customer per hour, for example, or 10 customer per hour. So that is the service uh, time rate. And then when, once once uh, we already have this interval uh, time rate and then the service time rate, we can create, uh, we can uh, simulate this by creating a random number. The random number, we, we generate random number and then we add we add the inter arrival time rate. Uh, we we generate the random number to uh, uh, and use the inter arrival time rate. We get the number, and then uh, when the customer go to the queue, uh, the delay the delay the, uh, the, uh, uh, is added. The time is added. Okay, so uh, the time is added, and then when the customer jump to the service, uh, this one how long? For example, let's say uh, ten seconds. Uh, okay, not ten seconds lah. Two minutes, okay. Then uh, it it's become uh, uh, two minutes. So, for example, uh, put it like this. Uh, let's say the random generated uh, with the interval uh, uh, time rate uh, distribution, saying that uh, the customer come uh, at five uh, five thirty, for example, okay. And then uh, we say the queuing zero, and then when they go to the service, uh, the service uh, is two minutes. So 5.32 exit from the counter, okay? So that's the same thing, right? Instead of we run in real time, waiting for 10 minutes, actually the real process is only two minutes, which is from here to here is actually only two minutes. That is why uh, they call it discrete event simulation. 
And this is the customer in the system is the same thing. So we'll be able to calculate uh, the average time a customer in the system and we'll be able to calculate the utilization. But we do not have to calculate the entire 10 minutes process from here to here. Ah, so that is the meaning of discrete event simulation. In continuous simulation using real world time, this from here to here can be 10 minutes, but in discrete event simulation, doesn't matter. It's only one, two, three step. Okay, this is we call it the simulation clock. Event, event number one, and event number two, and event number three. Okay, so if we see this, as you can see, this is one, one, uh, one time, one event, two event, and three event, and this is we call it simulation time. So therefore, this process is actually only two minutes, okay, it's, it's not, it's not uh, 10 minutes, uh, sorry, uh, the service time still two minutes, but the total time from here to here still will we'll get, because random can be like nine minutes, 10 minutes, because it's additional, right, addition, 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 but the process is actually only two minutes in here, uh, this one zero, and this one probably uh, eight minutes, so it's total 10, 10 minutes. So uh, by just doing like this, we be able to get 10 minutes in just three loop. That is why they call it discrete event. So we only uh, catch uh, we only catch the time when the event is happen. And this is uh, this event uh, when when this customer goes to this, it changes the state of this queue. And when the customer goes to this, it changes the state of this uh, uh, system <coughs> service. Sorry. So that is why they call it the discrete event simulation. Now, uh, we will probably will want to solve this, how to make this, uh, the customer uh, waiting time lesser eh? or the queuing time not very long. So we want to shorten the queue. So uh, instead of, again, doing the real continuous time simulation by observing real people queuing and then uh, Ask the barista to do the, the work and then we we hit the stopwatch and then we measure which is can i'm not saying cannot but we also can use uh, the discrete event simulation just by adding the time of the waiting the delay time okay so uh let's solve this so the easiest way is for example let's try adding two counters right as you can see by adding these two counters uh the queuing becomes shorter why because now it's more faster, right? And then, uh, and this one, the customer who, uh, she, she just came, she be able to queue uh, on the spot. So the interval of time, the queuing time zero and the service time rate, and then uh, it will shorten the average time of the customer in a system. And the utilization uh, uh, can be, can be 50%, can be, it depends on the time, but, but the idea is uh, it's not going to break the, the barista uh, energy because if she, uh, he or she working alone, probably the queue is very long. It takes time. And then the people in here, it's too long waiting. Uh, they just run away. So this is uh, usually the simple example or why we have to use simulation instead. And uh, uh, the simulation clock is only uh, this, this loop. Okay, so we don't have to know, we don't have to care about how long, we don't have to portray the people standing in the queue. We don't have to. And we don't have to portray uh, the barista making copy. No, we just have to know how long the barista making copy. We at the time on that, uh, on that moment. Okay, so other than this, the simple one example is, uh, for example, is this one. Uh, you want to model a key crane. You have a, a, a key crane, it, it has a hoist, it has a, 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 a everything in here for machinery. Uh, because when you want to pick up this uh, container, for example, it takes time, right? It takes time, uh, bring up and then bring the hoist over here and then drop it over here. So it takes time. So this, pro this time, we should be able to calculate as a... Uh, uh, as discrete event. So instead of we go find some crane and then we observe the time, we use a stopwatch manually, also can, but nobody wants to wait, to wait that uh, very long. 
and you want to know not only on that moment but the entire year for example uh, you want to know is this green uh, utilization uh, rate is good or not uh, is it efficient or not or with two crane or three crane or four crane uh, is it good or not so you want you want to make the simulation running as fast as possible that is why discrete event simulation comes uh, to this picture okay uh, so number one uh, I, I hope you understand the, at least uh, my explanation and for example like this one you want to model uh, AGV movement you know the autonomous uh, guided vehicle let's say this one is inside a factory the factory you know uh, or a logistic warehouse for example they, they there's a AGV is going to move from A to B uh, uh, and then from C they try to move here as you can see from 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 this as a human we have some ability to to predict not predict to at least have an instinct this B and A will collide and this C will, will never going to go to this C because it, it will be blocked uh, by this AB because uh, this this A is starting point uh, the, the starting it should go like this like this like this and then b should go like this probably okay but this one uh we have to make the a first come here but as you can see b is, is nearer nearer than 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 uh, this uh, location so technically if the speed of the ag be the same b will arrive first in here right and then c it takes time to go here 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 and they cannot go here because this is the, the end point uh, or, or C wants to go here uh, cannot because it, it was blocked uh, by, by this AB so how that is why simulation will come to this place uh, can maybe we we're thinking like um, can machine learning AI solve this well yeah can <laughs> But, however, the machine learning must learn first from historical data, okay? So, uh, without that, uh, the machine learning cannot solve the deadlock, for example, like this one. How do know the machine learning know? Unless they have experience in the data, in the model inside the machine learning, and uh, it can crunch some kind of like, like uh, uh, how to, to because uh, of the of the historical data, they, they they know how to solve this, and probably with the help of human, supervised by human. So if something law or something wrong, the human will will stop the AGB here, let the B go first, and next time the machine link execute uh, the 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 AGB movement, and it will be uh, correct in the next movement, right? Good. But uh, what happen if is a new design ah what happened if this factory is not exist they just planning to create this uh this this uh, uh factory this warehouse for example with the agv there's no historical data right how there's no historical data to 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 solve this kind of issue ah that is why it require simulation to solve this kind of uh situation that is why very important to know how to create a software application for simulation. Uh, uh, without that, uh, there's no way this machine learning or AI, you, you can give thousand AI here, you can put, I, I don't know how many AI you want to put. We are never going to solve as long as there is no historical data, uh, how to solve the deadlock, for example. So only simulation can solve this, okay? Uh, how about digital twins and simulation? We need to understand first, uh, a digital twin is a virtual representation that serves as a real-time digital counterpart of a physical object or process. Okay, this is Wikipedia explanation. But the idea is like this. Digital twin is, a, is, a, uh, is another uh, object, but in a digital model. So it's the same like simulation but this one is for mimicking the real system for example by adding the sensors everything inside the digital twin and the digital control be able to capture uh, digital twin control be able to capture this and uh, give this data to the simulation system so that's why digital twin uh, usually cannot work 
properly without simulation. You don't want to create digital twin without simulation. So the idea is uh, this kind of thing can be hybrid as well. It can add the one that is from historical data and then crunch the, the, the data in simulation. And this, or if the AI don't have the data, the, the, the machine learning don't have the data, the simulation will create it for them. So it will simulate first and then uh, can, can solve it. And this uh, result, they give to the machine learning to learn it here. I, I calculated for you. You machine learning, learn it. So the su simulation can be like the supervisor of the machine learning, the, the simulation. That is more powerful than machine learning, right? <laughs> so without uh, uh, without this, uh, the machine learning AI can, cannot do anything. Uh, so uh, simulation is kind of like the the thing that is not exist. Uh, they they crunch it, they, they, they simulate it, and then the, if the result is, is uh, optimized or efficient, they will give to the AI, to the machine learning to be able to be model uh, for the machine learning and the machine learning be able to solve it from that historical simulation data, not the historical real data, but historical simulation data. That is uh, the way. But as you can see, this is the physical object, as, as, as I mentioned just now, can be modeled for simulation. So. Uh, Digital twin and simulation is like like like, like buddy. It's like <laughs> brother and sister. So uh, this physical object can be model as simulation, and simulation be able to give this to the digital uh, uh, twin. Can also control the real machine. So from the simulation, for example, let's let's put it like this. Uh, there's a machinery send the data to the digital twin control. Okay. And digital twin control uh, from uh, from the machine sensor, everything will uh, will uh, store this data. They will give the simulation as a parameter, and within within hours, for example, the simulation will run. That is why I said to you the simulation requires super fast calculation. So uh, it can generate the, the how to solve this, and once it's done, a simulation will send back the data to the digital twin control, and the digital twin control will send to the actuator. To the IoT device inside the machine, so that is how it, how it, how it is done in the digital twin. So it's not only AI machine learning, but also simulation uh, can uh, help this kind of uh, solving uh, situation. If if in the big picture, something like this, huh? So this is a physical key crane, as you can see, this is real world. And let's say this is autonomous uh, crane. Okay, there is no human in here. Okay, from the IoT sensor, everything they can see. There is a ship. There is a a container they need to pick up uh, all the camera will capture what is the number of container that they need to dig in into the vessels and from the IT sensor uh, from the IT sensor sent to digital twin control okay and behind the scene there is a, a a digital twin which is the the digital model of this key crane which is uh, have a the the higher the the de detail is the more accurate uh, the the digital twin and from this digital twin inside, it has a simulation, okay? It will send the simulation if they look at the AI machine learning, never have this kind of solution, and say, oh, uh, we don't know how to solve this, okay? And it will execute the simulation to uh, how to solve this, huh? for example. How to solve, for example, it requires to, to, to take, to take uh, uh, 1,000 container from the vessels, in three hours, for example, and machine learning uh, say that, hey, I, I don't have that uh, experience, bro. <laughs> Sorry, simulation, you do the thing. So this simulation will try to simulate how to do it efficiently in three hours to take 1,000 uh, container from the vessel. If the simulation say, no, impossible, bro, the, the system has a limitation like the motor, the actuator, the hydraulic, they cannot exit that that utilization if i do that is 100 percent. so they will tell the digital twin uh control that hey cannot so this one you need to give more time uh the 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 the, the most efficient time is uh six hours or seven hours for example ah so the simulation is the one who say to the digital twin a hey, is the efficient the optimized one is six hours you ask for three hours impossible bro so the digital twin can can do negotiate and if the digital twin is uh, is executed is okay maybe some uh, by by 
by some person uh, executing this. Okay, this one uh, approved. They will send the, uh, uh, back to the actuator to do the process. And then this simulation will send the data to the machine learning. They will tell machine learning, hey, I have new data that you never do it before. Here is uh, how to solve it. So from that, the machine learning be able, it become more smarter because uh, it has something that is never been done before. There's no historical data. So Mr. Simulation is the one who create the uh, simulation uh, data, okay? Okay, uh, so I hope you understand now uh, the simulation part. Uh, once we understand this, you know now what is simulation, what is digital twin, what is the, the modeling, simulation modeling, uh, then we can now start talking about the O2S. Uh, we, I only have nine minutes left. Okay, so uh, what is O2S? It's uh, quite simple, is to answer this, it's just a framework <laughs> for discrete event simulator. So uh, you can create your own software, the one that I just mentioned to you, go ahead, but you need to know uh, the knowledge of uh, a simulation as well, which is sometimes, uh, you know, uh, if you are if you want to dig that deep, go ahead. But uh, if you don't want, then it's let's use someone simulation software or create your own. Uh, you might asking uh, why O2S? There's a lot of uh, software outside uh, that can do simulation by drawing, you know, dragging, drag and drop. Yeah, right. I know, but the thing is, they have limitation. This the limitation is they cannot simulate everything except the one that is already in their own uh, library, for example. That is something that you cannot. But this one is a, a is a software program, so you can almost create you can create almost anything, okay? Because it's a highly object oriented architecture with native support of time dilation optimization routines. So all you have to do just create the model correctly, okay, accurately. And uh, you can run the simulation. Uh, the output is, uh, I can probably better than the one that is a uh, uh, expensive software out there, for example. But I'm not saying the the other software is wrong. Uh, they have their own way to calculate uh, how to, uh, to simulate, and it has a different randomization, for example. And uh, that one uh, should be uh, taken into account. But the idea should be the same. If, for example, a service time. Uh, the, the waiting time is two seconds, the service time is three seconds, you just add that, that is five seconds, right? Simple, simple as that. But sometimes uh, uh, it has some kind of like a, a, a process within that, for example, like if you want to simulate a networking in software, you want to know whether the, the, the uh, 4G connection or 5G connection is uh, properly or efficient, efficient. Uh, you want to know whether uh, you put some kind of like the uh, the 4G BTS uh, antenna in a certain place, you want to know whether this one is efficient or not, then you need require to do simulation as well for that. So that's the idea. And uh, the third is uh, open source with MIT license. Ah, okay, later I will uh, uh, sh show you the, the source, where to find the source, okay. And this one is designed and developed by Dr. Lee Haubin from National University of Singapore. So he is a very expert in this. Uh, I learned a lot from him. So uh, I, if you no, don't know anything about simulation, you should to learn from him <laughs> because he's the, uh, the, the only, uh, I, I think he's the, the, the best teacher in my opinion uh, for learning uh, simulation in uh, NUS. Uh, I, I learned a lot. Uh, for example, once we know this O2Desk, what can we create? Okay, sometimes uh, what can we create this one? It's a simulation software, simulation software that be able to help you to solve certain things behind the scene. For example, uh, you have a back-end software, uh, you want to simulate like marketing in e-commerce uh, instead of relying on AI, <laughs> you know, in machine learning. Why don't you simulate as well, for example, you you be able to get, get more uh, data correctly as long as you model the situation of the customer uh, and the, the, the distributor or everything, you want to make the delivery more faster, you want to, you can use simulation to, to, to solve this. For example, like this one, uh, if I can, uh, if I can play back this, can I play back this? Boop. Okay, how do I play back? It's supposed to be playback. 
Okay. Okay. So this one is uh is supposed to be moving. So this one is uh hold on uh how to run this. Should be away. Ah, okay. I don't know how to run this. Ah, yeah, it's running already. Okay, as you can see, this is AGV is moving, and then there is a, a crane here. Uh, is uh, zoom. You see this is crane. This is crane. Uh, uh, taking the 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 container, uh, and they're going to put in container. The AGV move along. Okay, so this is a short uh, simulation. Uh, I just uh, show it to you. You can create something like this inside the the uh, uh, in in uh, a simulation. Uh, software, but this one is already the the uh, the output. Yeah, it's not the 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 real the total simulation. And you, as you can see, you can see this average uh, waiting is uh one point seven four minutes, for example. Average time is uh six minutes, for example. And uh, you, as you can see, the this is the AGV. This is the yard crane. As you can see, they can see the calculate the uh, uh yard crane uh, utilization is uh eight percent currently. Because there are so many yard crane and they haven't uh, do a lot of things, so if you add more container coming, for example, and then uh, it's going to be uh, uh, put in this uh, yard area, yard set. If you look at the container uh, ship uh, yard in terminal port, then you'll be able to calculate what is the the hourly rate, everything, and you can make the energy more efficient. For example, you can, uh, you uh, as uh, if you are a CEO, you can decide, hey, this one. I think we can move away from a uh, fuel, a uh, fossil fuel, uh, truck to go to electric, for example, uh, EV, uh, or using uh, AGV more, or using a uh, solar cell, whatever to 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 power this because it's, it's they can they can run uh, uh, eleven uh, per hour. Okay. So that is uh, uh, the way uh, the output of the simulation. Okay. Uh, so let's do some short demo here. Uh, let me just switch to my. Okay, I still have oh, two minutes. Okay, so so slowly, sorry. Okay, let me just open my. So, uh, switch, Visual Studio. Yep. Okay. Okay. So this one I have a, a O2 desk, a Hello World, and this is uh, number one when you when you uh, create a simulation using O2 desk. Number one, you need to add the packages, which is uh, O2 desk net. All you have to do is just go to uh, manage uh, new get package, and then you just type O2 desk. You should be able to see O2 desk net. Currently, is version uh, 3.7.1, and then once you already uh, have the package. Uh, I can create a simple principle of this hello world uh, simulation. <laughs> uh, we create a class, okay? And then uh, it's uh, inherited from the sandbox. Sandbox is from the O2Desk, okay? So uh, from this sandbox, uh, it has a lot of features inside the simulation uh, engine. So uh, number one is actually before you create this uh, uh, constructor, you can create what is the event. So uh, the event is something, uh, the one that you need, because this is a discrete event simulation, everything, the state changed by the event. So all you have to do, what is the event? If someone walking, moving, that's an event. Uh, if someone opened the door, that is an event. You can calculate the time if someone walking from one distance to another distance, for example. Or when the barista preparing something, that's an event. So the event is barista prepare uh, coffee, for example, and you can you can add the time. So in here, it's just simple. Uh, uh, it's a, a my the, we, we, I call it my event, and then there's a counter here, and there's a console uh, to just to ta to to write he hello world. Uh, hello world. The first one will be the the first count, and then we create a time delay. Let's say every every hello world should pop up one minute, one minute, one minute one minute like that okay and then you schedule the the this event again uh which is count plus one uh uh the, we, we increase the counter uh increase the counter one and then we give the delay okay so uh and the, in the constructor we schedule the first event so the first event they will execute this okay and then we schedule again it it looks like recursive, right? Uh, actually, is a is a, a future event list. It has a future event list. 
is is not directly calling this actually. So this one uh is only schedule uh, this event, and then behind the scene the engine will call this up after delay, uh one minute. But and when I say delay, it's not real delay like real world delay. Remember, it's just simulation delay, meaning that. Uh, the event is is just an event. We don't we don't calculate the delay. So you can put one hour in here. You can put one second in here. Uh, it it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, the speed of the simulation will be the same because that is the simulation time. Uh, in the program, we all you have to do is just create a simulation, and then we run for twenty times, for example. Okay. So let's run this. If uh, yeah. Yep. If I can run this, oh, here it is. <laughs> yeah. And there you go. You see? But this one, if you look at the time, is actually one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. But the speed, this is one event, one event, one event, one event. Okay, you just imagine if this is 20 minutes, 20 times, you need to wait for 20 minutes <laughs> in the real real world. You don't want to simulate that, right? But this one, we simulate 20 minutes in just less than one second. Okay, we, we can simulate 20 minutes uh, in one uh, less than one second. So this model can be very, very uh, so-called uh, uh, complex. Uh, this this one is very simple, but you can model anything that is super, uh, super complex, okay? Okay, so let's go back to the presentation. Uh, <clears throat> if I can find the control. Yeah, here it is. So uh, this one, if you want to know the modularization inside the O2 desk, uh, because I also uh, help in the uh, this uh, development of this as well, uh, including the latest one using the uh, resource constraint queue. Uh, but this one is the O2 desk modularization. As you can see, this is, uh, for example, like the, it has a generator built in inside. It has a queue. It has a server. You can use this one or you can inherit from this one. But does not mean you have to use this all. So what is generator? Generator is like a spawn in game. You know, you you, you generate with a certain distribution. Uh, you give like a, 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 a numbers like the min and the CV time, the the uh, uh, variance, for example, and then you it will generate the random and then will send to the queue. And this one is uh as you can see, this is the uh, the main system. Uh, it will execute all the event and from this uh it can execute another event inside another system so for example if you want to make a, a high fidelity model for example you want to uh when you want to uh, create a model like for example uh, a car a car engine uh, it has uh, someone start the the key for example oh, okay if you don't have okay you still have start key <laughs> and then after that you need to start the engine uh, and it takes time to start the engine and then go all the way to the engine itself <laughs> one by one until the, the, the spark, spark plug, for example, which is you don't want to do that. Some, but sometimes it's re required maybe for a space spaceship or a, a space a rocket to the to the outer space. Uh, probably uh, SpaceX or NASA has this simulation all the time. So when they want to take off, they will simulate first when they want to. Uh, click something, you know, they want to uh, execute it. Probably, I'm not, I'm not saying it's there, but probably uh, they need to simulate first. What happens if you click this? So the simulation will calculate and then to find the safest, the safest uh, 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 execution, the most optimized one. For example, like I believe like, you know, the, the, the helicopter the, uh, on Mars right now, uh, they, they try to program that so they can fly. I believe before it happens in the Mars, they do already simulate in the world, in, in, in computer. And probably it has a digital twin in real world. Uh, maybe on, on, on the same uh, atmospheric pressure, they put the, the helicopter, I don't know. Uh, it's it, it just probably my my, uh, my thinking. So it, it can be like that. So that is a, a simulation uh, uh, talking about uh, O2 desk. Uh, it, probably in the next meetup, I can talk about more uh, deep regarding the O2 desk, how to model. 
so thank you uh that's all uh, for me uh thanks thank you for joining the dotnet developers community in singapore i'm happy to be able to uh, talk again with you and i really really miss a in person event and we can eat pizza together and we can go to to some coffee after the meetup <laughs> that is something that i I'm, i'm waiting for for that it be, it's been a long time and for the autodesk you can go to the uh, lee haubin uh, github uh, autodesk.net and uh nuget package uh, is uh, autodesk.net and then the website is autodesk.net so lee haubin is a uh, dr lee haubin is uh, a, a singaporean so uh, uh, if you want to learn you can can also can uh, message him in in probably in in github or uh, twitter or or yeah so you just send a message to him or you can contact me i will i will, I will forward to to him Okay uh yeah the that is all so let me just check whether someone is asking question any question no yeah well yes reinforce learning correct yeah not supervise maybe reinforce also the same <laughs> you, you require resource supervise and reinforce as well yeah uh no questions okay okay then If no question then uh again thank you very much and uh yeah i hope uh to see you again on the next meetup and ciao bye bye